Hello everyone, it is Quirty Afro here, I'm bringing you another Train Simulator 2016 video and finally I have gotten around to doing it, it will be on the North London line today, we're going to be having a look at, it's been recently released, I'm a little bit late to the party with it, but uh, better late than never and it's definitely one of my most anticipated routes for Train Simulator, I've always just wanted just the whole London Underground, uh, Overground, well, Underground's a different kind of thing, but I've wanted the whole London Overground network in the game, and so this is hopefully a start to many. I'm a little bit upset that they haven't included things like the Clapham branch or the Goblin branch, which are small branches with very like limited amount of stops. There's not really much to add there to make their own, so I was a bit upset that... Uh, Things weren't like you know like added. I like I wish the Clapham branch was at least added. That's only like four more stops up to Clapham, and you already have the assets and stuff for Clapham Junction and the approach to Clapham. So I'm a little bit annoyed in that. Uh, I'm going to be doing this video. We're going to be doing this scenario here called crossing over to Richmond. Uh, today you'll be operating a two N three one zero nine two seven Stratford London to Richmond. Your train is formed of the five car class three seven eight number. 378201 and we will be having I think I do believe I have on this scenario enabled the uh, unwrapped livery which means the fifth no the fourth coach in the middle somewhere has the kind of wrapped unwrapped kind of present thing where uh, when they were introducing the five cars that's how the livery was until like now it's probably all normalized or probably some of them still have the kind of wrapped livery and there it was installing some of my um, workshop scenarios, oddly, so that's a bit odd. Anyway, uh, this was kindly, this route was kindly given to me by Dovetail Games, part of their Dovetail Games Outreach Program, I do believe it's called, and um, nothing, uh, no one's been forcing me to say anything about this route, all the opinions and stuff that I say in this video will be all my opinions and all my own, just to make a disclaimer there to think that I am trying to sell this to you. These are my opinions, I will tell you the good, and I'll tell you the bad, and my, just my kind of general thoughts of any kind of video I've ever done on Train Simulator, it'll just be the normal kind of thing. I just wanted to put that out there because I did not pay for this myself, I got it for free. Anyway, before we get into the game, shout out to go to Fire underscore, and the gaming man, that's again Fire underscore, and the gaming man, their links and stuff will be down below, and uh, those are the shout outs. Also, there's also this other cool scenario that which I'm going to do in the future, which is of the Class 172. Uh, obviously, the Goblin line isn't in the game, but there's actually a cool one, which actually is from uh, Woodgrange Park, uh, outside of Gospel Oak, to Wills and Junction lower level. So we'll get that sometime in the future. I definitely want to cover that as well. But today, we're going to be doing a crossover to Richmond, and I will see you in the Class 378 unit when we get into the game. Hello driver and welcome to Stratford on the Great Eastern Main Line. Open the doors to allow passengers to board before driving this 5 car class 378 the full length of the North London Line to Richmond. Don't forget to switch from overhead to third rail at Acton Central. Instructions will be given once you get there. So guys this is going to be quite a lengthy journey so sit, uh, sit tight. Grab a snack or something, or just uh, do whatever you do when you watch one of my very long videos. This is going to be one, probably an hour and a bit journey, so sit back and relax, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So, let's get into this. We are here at lovely Stratford, which we all know how Stratford looks like by now, I'm pretty sure. But, let's just go into free cam and actually have a look at this thing. Uh, 378, been in the game for quite some time, so nothing too, uh, nothing too new to look. But, if we go to the back of the train... Hello, unwrapped livery. This is one of 57 extra carriages we're unwrapping. So I thought that'd be cool, and that's been uh, that, that's been put into this scenario, which is really nice, and uh, it does look nice. Let's just open the doors. I am running the uh, Armstrong Powerhouse uh, Class 377, 375, 378 sound pack all together. So uh, nice, juicy sounds, which is uh, all, all very nice. Stratford looks exactly the same. I don't think there's anything that's actually changed too much with Stratford. Just that I think some of the overground kind of like livery stuff and decal and stuff has been added to the station, which is which is nice. Let's just get into the cab here and set up everything. There's nothing really we need to actually set up. Just 
put Reversa in forward. Have some free 60s over there pulling in. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we can put on our headlights, of course. There we go. I don't think we are... One thing that's not with this 5-1 is that the front here, this gangway door, doesn't actually have that. Like, it's a 5-train thing, which is a bit sad. But, well, we got the unwrapped livery, which I think, you know, you got to compromise one or the other. <laughs> but uh, that should be that should be all right. But I'm, I'm looking forward to getting along on this journey. I haven't... I've done the whole route, actually, on a live stream before, so I have done the whole route, but it's been at night. I haven't done it through the day. I'm pretty excited to bring this to you, actually, because... As I said, it's been one of my most anticipated routes to actually like play and you know have in train simulators. So I'm really glad that they've put it in. I've had mixed feelings from people about this route, saying you know it's good in that, but it is very linear. You know, for se it's a 17 mile route, uh, and for 25 pounds, it is a bit steep because it's just one linear route. And as I was saying, there's not many branch lines and stuff you can. Uh, you can do, you would think that they would put in, I don't know, the Richmond branch or the Goblin branch or even up to Watford Junction. They, these aren't really that, they're not big routes. So, you know, the passengers have boarded the train and you are cleared to depart for Richmond. First stop at Annie Wick, I will. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's head out. Fifteen miles an hour out of this uh, station, so we're not gonna we're not gonna speed up too quickly. I actually quite like that unwrapped livery. That's quite nice. It's not the most attractive livery on a train, but you know. There we go. Nicely does it. There's going to be a lot of stopping, stopping kind of. It's it's, it's a stopping service. So what do you expect? There's going to be loads of stops and stuff like that. So I'm gonna. Hopefully try and do my best. I'm not the best at stopping service and I think this one is timed, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be on our best behaviour here with uh, arriving uh, correctly at stops and hopefully not being too late. We don't wanna be massively late. I have to say the frequency of trains on this on the North London line and the overground um, network in general is amazing how they've got now because I remember the back in the days of Silverlink uh, trains would come maybe every half an hour, even sometimes every 45 minutes, and sometimes every hour. Like the service was, it was a, it was a, like it was a good service in in terms of like it got like the the route itself is really useful. But back in the day of Silverlink, it was not utilized properly, so it was just. It was so bad. Not many people used it, which was a shame. You can see now that with the London Overcrown kind of investment into it, it's been radicalized so much and loads of people now use it. And it's crazy. It's almost as busy as a tube. And because obviously the trains are... I think they can fit more people than like a tube train, but you still get like packed rush hour trains. And that's something that I've lived through for a good few years when I went to college in Richmond and when I had to use this service down from Wilsdon Junction down to Richmond. Might be only a few stops but the rush hour kind of things you would get on the route it's just it it was literally just packed with people it's crazy and I'm so glad that they actually you know you have um you know you have walk through kind of gangways here through carriages because i think if there if there wasn't it would just it, it wouldn't be good it really wouldn't it'd be it would be a problem right coming up to hackney wick here i think we should be fine for as uh, for a uh, half past 9 arrival and departure hopefully But so far, so good. I don't know too much about this area of the route. I'm more knowledgeable on everything maybe passed from Highbury and Lisington onwards. I don't... I've not actually been too much on the, the Stratford part too much. And I've not even been up to North Woolwich when the North Woolwich branch was, like, in service. So this part of the line, I'm not too... You know, I've been on it a few times, mainly at night, actually, I have to say. I've only been to, like, Stratford and then come back from Stratford with the overground at night. So... Most of this in the daytime right now is it's fairly new to me. Obviously, I can rec recognize it, but it is a it is a bit different, right? And also, being the five car, we're gonna uh, <laughs> some of these platforms just about fit a five car train, so we're gonna have to watch ourselves uh, <laughs> while going through these stations because 
<laughs> but we, we could easily overrun or even not, or probably more overrun. How can you work? Oh, I've, I've kind of been noticing that these kind of roundels look more red than orange on some stations. I don't know why. Because look, that's the orange of the doors. I'd think that would be the orange of the roundels, but they're weirdly... They're weirdly a bit more red. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, or if it's just maybe my eyes. I'll just pretend that there was a guard. There's no guards on this service anymore. Okay, we need to get there for 32, which... Anyway, these stations are like just basically a mile apart. They're, they're not really uh, anything like, you know, like a few miles apart or whatever. We should be able to make it in time, on, in all good fairness. I did have a problem though with at Acton Central when I was on when I was live streaming this route. I had a little bit of a problem with the actual pantograph shoe switch. Like the the controls and stuff were not working properly. I, I put the shoe gear down, but the pantograph was still up. So there are some little bugs and stuff like that with that. I don't know if that's been rectified, but uh, we'll see when we get to Acton Central when we actually have to convert from um, we have to convert from like pantograph to uh, shoe gear. Next station is Homerton. I hope we see some. Uh, oh come on with this 25 mile now! I hope we see some more five car trains. I hope I'm not the only five car train on the line. It would be good to see other ones. I don't know uh, what this author of this scenario has put in for, because I've seen some scenarios on the workshop where uh, they put in like the class 483 as a substitute for the S stock district line. I wanted to play. A scenario by Adama 045 uh, with he actually had a skin with for the um, three seven eights of a kind of London Underground livery, but unfortunately that scenario doesn't work, which is really sad because it, it looked really packed a lot with different skins and stuff like that. But it just keeps getting a out of memory error crash. So I'm sorry that I couldn't really bring that to you guys. But I mean this one's alright. I didn't want to do one of the Korea ones that came with the. <laughs> with the actual route because I'm not <laughs> the biggest fan of Korea as you know all know. <laughs> anyway, Homerton. I really need to concentrate on these kind of <laughs> these stopping markers because trust me, as I said, uh most of these stations just about fit five cars. Uh as you, I think this will be the first one that just about fits one. Yeah, you can see. Well, you can see here in real life. I'll just have to go a little bit forward, but you see this station here just doesn't seem to like this would not be able to fit full a full five car kind of thing. Uh, let's even go to the front. Like I had just like a bit more to go forward on, and that wouldn't have fit the whole train on. So some of these stations in the game have not been spread out enough to fit a five a five car, you know, set. So, I don't know. Anyway, next station is Hackney Central. Don't know a lot about Hackney, but uh, I know it's not the nicest of places. I think it's improved a lot, though. Let's get a little bit of a speed on, because I do believe we're slightly behind by a minute or two, but we should hopefully be able to speed back up. I do believe the kind of max speed on the line is about 45, so we're not going to be going anywhere too fast. I have a little bit of drop in FPS loading in some of the scenery, which is a bit annoying. I'll be playing, I'll be playing Omsi or something like. <laughs> right. So far, uh, the scenery is good. Like I think the kind of general consensus, like when people will complain, like I've had people with mixed feelings saying, like, yeah, it's a linear route for 17 miles. But if you think about it, you have to think about, it. yeah, it's a linear route, and I do get that, and I'm not happy that it's like priced this high. But then you have to think, it's a, it's a 17 mile constant stopping kind of route. You have station after station after station, so. You have to think about that. Like you have some routes, and I, I've already explained this in my previous train sim video uh, when I was driving the uh, Virgin Class 390 Pendolino. You have you have routes which have loads of kind of like scenery like this, where there's loads of stops, but it not might not be overall a very long route. This is only 17 miles. Well, something like London to Peterborough, that's like 
over 100 miles. So you have to kind of think, you have to kind of think, well, or some, I don't know. I, I, I'm, to me, I'm just happy that this route exists. Uh, I wish, as I said, the only kind of complaint I have so far about it is that I wish they would have put more branch lines in it, such as the Goblin or the Clapham Junction branch, or even maybe link up Dalston, um, even like link up uh, Dalston Junction to Surrey Keys. That would have been perfect. So people on, you know, the workshop could have stitched the routes together. So you could do a, you could do a hybrid Islington to Clapham Junction kind of you know, route or whatever, like, that, that, there was such an opportunity for that, and that's what I find with some of the routes, these kind of recent routes, is that there's such opportunities, there's such missed opportunities with some of these routes to actually really make them fully worthwhile and full, uh, fully worth the kind of £25 uh, price tag for them. Like, that's just my general opinion there, like, I honestly think, like, this could have been done with, like, s many branch lines of here, because you have, you, you only have a few, but... I don't know. I hope maybe in the future, maybe they they, probably, they could easily do something like they did with the London to Faversham and like update it with like like the how they did with the Sheerness on Sea uh, branch. But that I find I'm not really happy that when they did that even because I thought that was a bit, you know, just a small branch line they could have added with the actual main route. You know what I mean? Oh yes, another Falcon. Nice. I like that. But I don't know actually currently right now if, if the whole network is with five cars. I definitely know that the East London portion of the network is uh, definitely covered with uh, uh, with five cars. I don't know about the North London line section. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yes. But anyway, I think this station again is another one that can just barely... Yeah, it can just barely accommodate. So, to be honest, I think this, I did actually a pretty good job. In real life, these doors would open, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's actually not too bad. That's right, spot on on the money, but this, this station's really small. Oh, look at that. I'm barely squeezed in. But whatever. This is Dalston Kingsland, uh, the ugly... Older brother of Dalston Junction. And let's get her going. Next station is Cannonbury. Let's quickly have a peek in here. Oh, hello, where were we going there? Let's have a peek. Oh, we can't. I wanted to have a peek to see if... Uh, FPS dropping like crazy. That was a bit of what that was a bit weird. And there's oh the, there's the infamous cat there. I've actually watched Squirrel's video when he covered this route, and then literally throughout his whole video, I was just hearing that annoying cat, which I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Is it like cats on this line or something like that? It's crazy. But yeah, if you hear the cat. I don't know, that's just the sound that's just been added, and uh, it's there. <laughs> Alright, Canterbury Station. I like this section of the route, I really do. Like, in real life, I love it that there's... It's basically two different branch lines following, kind of, each other. And it's like, you don't see a lot of these kind of things in terms of, like, train networks or whatever. I just kind of like this. It's the same, you have the same kind of London overground, but... One is, you know, Pantograph, one's third rail. It's, I just think that's very cool. And I feel, I feel I get quite a lot of drops in FPS. I don't know why. It's a bit odd. Let's uh, get down to slow down a little bit. And... Perfect. Almost perfect, I guess. But that's within the platform. I don't know why the doors aren't opening. That's a bit odd. Anyway, Canterbury, one of the only two stations where the branches, like, share, get shared. What the hell's that? Chess hunt. Some of these weird, <laughs> these weird kind of destinations that get popped up. But yeah, that should fit. I, I kind of fit in there. I don't know why. Oh, that's odd. Off we go. 
Off we go to Highbury and Islington, where we say farewell to the East London section of the branch. I just, I, I just, I still like that. I really do like that the kind of third rail branch, and then the uh, the uh, the pantograph branch. That's just, I, I kind of do kind of like that. We're still a little bit late. We have to, oh my god, we have to arrive there at forty. Wow, we really need to uh, try and grab back some minutes here. Might be a little difficult. Another five car over there. Quite nice. But the thing is, if I keep... Like, I'm trying to keep maintaining like 40. But the thing is, if I go into a station at 40, it's very hard to slow down and, you know, slow down like without having to use a lot of brake. So I'm going to have to try and just work it out and just get a good rhythm going here. Anyway, Hybrid Islington. This Hybrid Islington changed so much during its kind of renovation into the kind of East London line. Like, I mean, it changed a lot. I remember the old station. It looked terrible, in all fairness. It really, really did. And now it looks all brand spanking new. The actual... Well, the platforms where the East London line actually goes is actually where the old line used to actually run. And now these two new platforms here are actually for the old line, which is a bit to get your head around. They get, the actual platforms continue from the platforms down below in the sub-level where we can read platform 8. So you'd think it would go 1 to 4, but it actually continues from... Continues from the sub-level or sub-level platforms. Anyway, let's go. Enough chitter chat. We have uh, minutes to get back. We are running on a schedule here. Like what we? It's it's 9:42, so it's around just after rush hour. It's still maybe on the hinges of rush hour, so we still have to kind of you know get to a uh, get to Richmond in all good time. And what is up with this drop in FPS? This is. I find it odd. I only get this on a few maps, so this map might be just a bit odd here in terms of this kind of drop in FPS. I'm getting some lags, lag spikes of, of drops of FPS. What am I saying? And now we connect back to our original line. And then we're all by ourselves now. The East London line stops, goes its own way, and then we go our own way. And, uh,. Well, it's an orbital network, so technically you can I can come back all the way around without turning back. If I continued to Clapham Junction and then went from Clapham Junction to Highbury and Islington. So, you know. Just if you didn't know that it was an orbital network. Right. And stop. Lovely. I think I just, I think I just about hit that. Yeah, just hit about hit that marker. That is good. <laughs> that is better. <laughs> Must improve. And not do anything more stupid. Like overrun. Go use the. I've been using the emergency brake a little bit. I'm a bit cheeky there, but it's not career, so it doesn't penalise me. But I need to. I need to cut that kind of bad habit out. Yeah, let's just ignore that for now. Actually, this might be a good place to get some speed up again, because uh, Camden Road is about a mile away, and we have to get there in about one minute now, or two, and well, yeah, about one and a half minutes, so we could try, we could try, we can try and uh, get back some seconds here if we can get up to 40 quickly and maintain 40 at a good rate. But anyway, no, this is this is the part of the route where I'm a bit more familiar with, so I'll t try and speak a little bit about each station, maybe. If I know something about it, of course. And what is up with this FPS? Yeah, I'm getting quite a lot of these FPS uh, drops. Really annoying. That's another thing that I'm just not really liking about this route. In most strata routes, I don't really get that kind of drop in effort. It honestly feels like I'm playing on to you now. I just feel like every bit I go, and then it has to load in some stuff, and then, you know. 
We might actually make this one on time, actually, now I've seen actually the time. That's actually not too bad. I wish that 20 uh, limit was not there. And that's that alarm there is for the 20. I see, come in. And over there, as you saw, we just passed was actually St. Pancras. So all the kind of good stations we're passing here. Because this is like the over, yeah, it's the overground kind of rail of London. It goes over everything. It's mainly on viaducts and stuff like that over London. Nicely does it. Go down to 20. I don't mind if I'm just a little bit over the limit. There we go. Go 20 is achieved, and hopefully, I can get in within with about like 20 15 seconds to spare so we can leave on time at 47. That would be really, really good. And I'll slow down a bit, and that should be fine. Come on, come on, come on. Yep, we arrived on time. Nice. Very nice. And this station, after this station actually, on the um, departure, there is a junction which goes onto Primrose Hill, a closed station which then goes onto the actual London Euston part of the route where uh, you go to stations such as Kilburn High Road and South Hampstead. So that's, that, that's all that kind of good stuff there. And there were actually proposals to reopen uh, that part of the route uh, in case that they closed down the kind of Watford uh, Junction to Euston line and extend the Bakerloo uh, Underground line up to Watford Junction as it used to be. So it's, uh, you know, it's still an important junction. Freight trains uh, use it vastly today mainly. That's the only reason why it's still there. And also when actually when they're shuttling trains around and when certain parts of um, the line past this station here where we're now going are closed, it's actually used to shuttle trains from like Wilson Junction to Stratford so they can keep the line open instead of um, having nothing basically running from Wilsdon to Camden, uh, to, to Camden Road. So it's a nice actually little kind of relief line in a way. So if anything happens between uh, Wilsdon and Wilson Junction and uh, Camden Road, you can just use the kind of Primro Primrose kind of section, Primrose Hill section, so, you know, it's a nice little kind of thing. Coming over here now to Kentish Town West, which has somewhere nearby the Thameslink Station, Kentish Town, I do believe, yeah, Kentish Town. And there you can change for your first capital connect, or Thameslink now, as uh, it's called. They're actually not too far away, I do you believe. And the Cam Camden Market is somewhere in between Camden Road and Kentish Town West as well. For any of you avid lovers of Camden, Camden Road Market. But some of these signs and stuff like that, I feel they're a little bit old. Like, um, some of these look at some of the temporary overground signs that were used. But most now should be the kind of full official kind of sign. There we go. Oh, perfect. Like if I zoom into here, you can actually see this is this is not the actual sign. This is actually a temporary sign. Uh, as I remember, these were temporary overground signs, and then the the the, the newer kind of official ones are more kind of like the roundels or whatever. So I don't know. Maybe they just based it off the kind of times when uh, it was all kind of temporary or whatever. But this still looks red to me. I don't know. It doesn't look orange. Unwrapped livery. Gorgeous. All these kind of flats and stuff like that. I don't know if there's a lot, there is probably a lot of kind of custom assets in here, of course, that ha there will have to be, because this route is very diverse. Hearing all the sirens and stuff like that. <laughs> Can't be London without, without having some sirens. 
Right, Gospel Oak. Very nice station, actually, Gospel Oak. I love the kind of the two. You have the two platforms, and then you actually have the the um, the Goblin Line kind of platform, which is just you just like step over, like step through a few stops and uh, steps in a ramp, which is really nice. Very nice station. I just wish that they would include like the Goblin extension. That'd be just so nice if they did that. But who knows? Maybe an update or whatever. But that's like uh, honestly, those are the that's the kind of main kind of bad thing about this kind of route, this kind of release of this DLC. That's the only kind of thing I'm kind of upset about, really. If I had to, if I had to put like something really bad that I don't like about this route, because other than that, so far I have to say the detail and stuff of each station is pretty good. I've been to most of these stations. Most of these stations look pretty nice. And there we go for that one. And I do hear a 172, I do believe. Ah, look at that. Beautiful. That was timed. Oh. Oh, I thought it was continuing. That was, that was a bit weird. It looked like it was going to hit the buffer there in just a bit. That was a, that was a bit weird. But here, look, this is the Class 172 in the uh, London Overground livery. Uh, as I said at the beginning, there is a scenario that I have from the workshop that I will be driving one of these from this station, essentially, to Wilson Junction lower level, and then from the lower level to the depot. So that's something I'll bring out very soon. So stick around for that. It does look really cool, actually, in this livery. I don't believe this is the full variant. Because I do believe this 172 is slightly different. Or maybe I'm just wrong and I'm just talking absolute crap. But I do believe there's some little cosmetical differences. I think this is not the full skin, but I don't know. But it looks good. And it's great that we actually sort of saw it. That's great. Uh, that's nicely scripted in there. And our train is ready to go. Next station, Finchley Road and Frognall. Like that. Diesel one side, electric on the other. Excellent. Off she goes. I don't know how many services they actually run on the Goblin Line. It's a very, it's not a, a frequent service, I do believe. They only have like a few trains running at one time. It's not like a massively overused route. And I think they have actually plans to electrify it. So I don't know. Maybe in the future we just will be seeing a uh, class three seven eights everywhere, even on the Goblin Line up to Barking, which would be pretty cool. And maybe by then, if they Probably when they electrify, they probably will run maybe more frequent services on that line, maybe, I guess. But actually, to be honest, it won't be 378s. I do believe it'll be... Uh, I can't remember the name of them. I think they're called AT200s. I don't know who they're built. Are they built by Siemens, I do believe? Or Hitachi? Hitachi AT200s or Siemens AT200s. Uh, don't quote me on that. But I do believe they're, the, um, they're going to be the kind of substitute trains if the the route gets electrified so that's something to look forward i guess to the goblin line and i do believe we as i can see here from the actual schedule we are back on track uh we're back on track to kind of be a little bit earlier more on time now to schedule which is good uh wait hold up hold up hold up hold up what station's this Um, what? Why is Hampstead Heath not? Why is Hampstead Heath not as a uh, as a? <laughs> okay, this is a bit embarrassing. The author forgot to. Yeah, the author forgot to script in Hampstead Heath. <laughs> but just like looking like there was there was no station there coming. But I, with my skill, because I have skill, look at that. Perfect on the marker right there. I didn't even know the station. Well, I should know that the station's coming up, but I, I just saw it and I, on my HUD, it didn't appear. So I think that is pretty damn good. That's going to make me slightly late now for Finchley Red and Frognall, which is a bit annoying, but 
what you can do. I want to put on 100%. Let's just get out of here really fast. But te technically, we should be stopping at this station. <laughs> it's it's a stop on the line. I would understand if the if in the like message bulletin we'd say, oh yeah, Hampstead Heath is closed. By the way, you don't have to stop here. But instead, it's just been totally ignored out. And then there, I just had to kind of just use intuition and stop, <laughs> st stop. <laughs> But I did it, and uh, I got the marker, so that's not too bad. And this is probably the longest tunnel on the on the whole line, and um, it feels like the fastest part of the line that, well, I think when I'm on the train, it feels like it's the most fastest part on, uh, on the line where drivers, you know, give a little bit of welly, but it's only 45 miles an hour that they only get up to, so. But it feels long. It's a pretty long tunnel, actually, to be honest. I think it's the one of the only tunnels there's not a lot of tunnels on the north london line uh yeah there really actually isn't a lot of tunnels i think this is one of maybe a few more there's only like two or three or four something like that it's, it's not a lot anyway finchley road and frog and also by the way hampstead heath you alight i alight there for hampstead heath as well as i do believe the royal free hospital royal free hospital i think it's called I definitely know that there's a hospital there. And Finchley Road and Frognall, which basically down the road from here is Finchley Road for the uh, Jubilee and, uh, well, just the Jubilee line. Oh, and, and the district, uh, and the uh, Metropolitan line, what am I saying? Completely getting my tube lines here all mixed up. And also outside here is Camden Arts Centre, I do believe, as well. There's a few little things out here. It's uh, just a main kind of dual carriage highway road that runs through here down to Finchley Road. And I do believe, like, Swiss, Swiss, uh, Swiss Cottage and St John's Wood. And then eventually it just goes into central London, etc. So it's, uh, I guess it connects up somehow, you know. Anyway, we are now officially late again because we stopped at a station that we should have stopped, but it wasn't included in our plan. <laughs> Doesn't matter, we'll just continue and just try and we'll, we'll be able to catch up again. I'm pretty sure of it. As you saw there, like a gospel oak, we had to wait there for a good amount of time. So I'm guessing somewhere maybe at Wilson Junction, we're probably going to have to wait there a bit. Normally trains, train drivers swap out um, at Wilson Junction. So might have a little bit of a rest there. But even maybe before, I don't know. But Wilson Junction, normally trains don't just stop and go. They stop, wait a bit, change driver most of the time. And yeah. West Hampstead. Now, if you didn't know this, there are actually three West Hampstead stations, which might get a bit confusing, but um, there's an overground station, there's a tube station, and there's a Thameslink station. So, a lot of West Hampstead stations, and they're not connected to each other, which is, uh, <laughs> which is the uh, annoying thing. Did we just manage to fit here? Oh we, oh, we did, but the doors just won't open because, you know, stubborn. Stubborn kind of scripting or whatever of the platforms or whatever. So, if I can actually take you up here, there is the... And it's not even done, scened in. That's West Hampstead Station. <laughs> tube Station. And then if we go over here, there is West Hampstead Thameslink Station. Which is, you know, done in because obviously it's in the game already. And then here where we are in the middle is uh, this one. We're right in the middle. But we're gonna we're gonna cross now. We're gonna actually cross the uh, the tube and kind of flick over like a cross. And then we will enter Brundisbury, which is on the shoot up hill, I do believe it's called, and that. Basically, that road has them Kilburn tube station on it, and then you can actually follow that road all the way up to the M1, where the M1 begins, and all the way down right to Marble Arch in central London. So it's a very long road. But the road essentially would have actually gone out of London back in the day, or not really back in the day, but quite a long time ago, and it would have gone up the country. 
So there was like, there's loads of kind of like stones with kind of like uh, city names on it saying how many miles and how long it would take you to get there, which I think is pretty cool. Right. Nicely does it. Into Bermondsey. Bro uh, what am I saying? Bermondsey, Brondesbury. I always get mixed up with uh, Bermondsey and Brondesbury. There we go. And I don't believe... Yeah, we didn't fit in here. I think in real life as well, that actually does... It, it, it's about right uh, how it fits in here, but normally as well, <laughs> in real life, the doors would open. So, you know, it's just something... And if we pop over here, because I'm just, you know, walking around scenery, because I've... I, like, live near here, and I have, like, friends that live around here. So here's Kilburn. Not done in, of course. And if you keep going that way, you'd get down to central London eventually. But here we end up in some flats, but <laughs> what can you do? Anyway, next station, Brondesbury Park. <laughs> Just giving a little tour around these places, really, <laughs> in this video. It's more of like a tour guide of the North London line, not really just me driving. I think the driving is the very last kind of secondary thing of the video. <laughs> It's me attempting to drive, but giving a good tour. <laughs> but at least we're getting uh, 45 as the kind of main speed, which is good. So we can just scoot along and then just uh, start braking. You literally get up to 45 and then you already have to start braking. Brondesby Park, really, Brondesby and Brondesby Park are so close to each other. It's, 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 I think you can literally walk 100 metres down the road of where they are and you'll get to one of them, so they're very close. Stop! I think we didn't make that. I think we made, we made that at the back. Yeah, we did, but we, oh, I had loads of space to play with. The HUD. Oh, some textures missing. Damn. It's a nice view. You can see the platform's also slightly taller. I like that kind of effect. It just makes this train look much smaller than it is. Staying clear of the doors. Train's ready to leave. Lovely. Berman Sea Park. I don't think the the, the scenery is. Well, you can see these assets have been copied over from other things. Like this bus, this shelter here is actually not how it looks like in real life. So it's a bit lazy here, where some of these have just been copied over from basic kind of, you know, assets. But we're actually getting close to my uh, local station, which is Wilsdon Junction. So. Wilson Junction is my main kind of station I'm looking forward to see in this journey. Now we're approaching Kensal Rise. And down the road from here is Kensal Green, the Bakerloo, another overground station as well. I see, does it. And now I've come in too slow. See, it's either with me that you come in too fast or you come in too slow. I never can really try and get bang on the actual perfect speed, if you know what I mean. Right, there we go. That's That's got it. Lovely. And how are we doing in terms of time? Uh, we're still late. But only by like a mere, like... 30 seconds or something like that, which, to be honest, is not too bad. I have to say, the overground is not actually too bad on t like in terms of timings and stuff like that. They're actually pretty good. They're improving. Uh, they're really either hit or miss. They're either on time or they're really, really delayed. So you never get like, you never get like minor delays or whatever. You always get like a really heavy delay or you, or they're on time pretty much. So I have to give them credit for that. 
but you know 30 seconds is maybe in real life as well something that is of similar kind of trait actually to be honest mo with most kind of rides I've been on most of them do come early especially in Bulls and Junction most tend to come earlier because obviously they have to do a, tra uh, a train driver swap or whatever so they tend to come like a few minutes early and then the train just stands there for like a few minutes a few extra minutes while it's changing drivers or then when it's off and another drop there in FPS which is just so annoying I really hate that it just ruins the experience Here on the uh, left, I mean on the right, is the old siding that they used to use uh, before they made a new one up ahead, which I'll point out. Because obviously trains, some trains terminate at Wilson Junction. All the Clapham trains used to before terminate at Wilson Junction. But now obviously with Overground they've integrated that branch line so you have trains going from Stratford to Clapham and Clapham to Stratford, vice versa. And then I think in off-peak hours they return to kind of like terminating at Wilston Green. So, you know, just something. There, on the right there, as you can see, that's the new siding for Wilson Junction. Because it's actually pretty far in time, if you think about it. It's quite far, that other siding that we just passed from the station. Normally sidings are just after the station, but that's a pretty far, far siding to get to. Come on, SPS, get back to normal. And what's cool with Wilson Junction, it's well, it's obviously my home station, uh, you get this cool pathway here that you get to walk beside the trains, which I think is just so cool, as you can see here, to get into the station. On one of the, it, has, it has like two entrances, Wilson. Uh, let's go here. And this is my station. Doesn't look too bad. It's just... Uh, I'm going to have to stop here, like how everyone stops at Wilson Junction. You don't go to the very end of the platform, you come to this kind of where the canopy ends and there we go. There we go and did we arrive on time? Yes we did! Oh that's great. So yeah I told you Wilson Junction will catch up at Wilson Junction because we're going to obviously have to wait there. So that's where you normally stop, you never ever go, this is just so incorrect right here. You never ever go to this point because of, look, that's past the signal. That just doesn't even make sense. But anyway, Wilson Junction. It's been done up all nicely. You can see a nice image paste, which is just okay, I guess. It's been all nicely done up. This is actually fairly new. This kind of little gap here. This is fairly new. Uh, these are this here is the extended bit. This never used to be here, like the, for the five cars. And then down here you had like a little subway which would take you to the lower platforms where the Bakerloo line goes and uh, a middle platform for some special service overground station, uh, oh, trains. So all pretty good. Let's just go back up here and watch the train go. Oh my god, where the hell am I? Okay, I'm here. Right, train, you can go. Oh, some London Midland action there. Obviously the West Coast main line is right below us as well that passes us. And all that good stuff. You'll see Pendolinos, 350s, and uh, 321s. Yes, and then over here is the Wilson Green Depot, where you get all the lovely 378s basically now. Pretty much it. And also, they refuel some of their 172s there as well, so that's all good. Watching our train. That's nice. And then, yeah, Wils oh, Wilson's Junction is just such a huge, complicated mess in real life. Left here would go on, on to Clapham Junction, and then we're continuing, obviously, to uh, Richmond. And then here you have loads of kind of industrial kind of places. The West Coast Bay Line goes up to the north and down to the south there, this way to Euston. But let's get back into our train because, you know, we don't get sidetracked. I would love to just, you know, be in Wilsden and show you every little nook and cranny. But it's not that detailed to do that. But I hope you got a nice gist of it. And now we're in the portion of the route which I used to do every, every day, essentially. Off to college. 
And I do believe our next station, which is Acton Central, we change from Pantograph to Third Rail, which is nice. I hope we, we shouldn't have any problems with it. I really hope we don't. We'll be going over actually Old Oak Common Lane. Yes, Old Oak Common Lane Junction, which is basically the Great Western Main Line as well. So this overground route is actually pretty cool because you get to go over some really nice lines throughout London. You get to go over a lot of tube lines, you get to go a lot over a lot of like we've passed Thameslink, we've passed the you know Great um, Eastern Main Line where we started off. We passed we passed St Pancras, we passed um, the West Coast Main Line. Now we're going to pass the uh, Great Western Main Line, as you can see here. Now we're passing just a lot to pass, if you know what I mean. And there's all that kind of good stuff over there in terms of all the uh, depots and stuff like that. Crossroad Project, obviously, right now in real life. So pretty good. Like you get quite a lot of variety in terms of scenery and what, what you pass. You just don't get a lot of variety in terms of the actual route because you only get one train, which is how it is in real life. It's not like we're missing a lot of variation of stock. <laughs> anyway, oh my god, keeping bloody 35 miles an hour in this section is not fun. Right. Right, I'm going to do something which I know drivers do which probably the scenario thing won't like me for doing is before I get to what I, what, what drivers tend to do when they approach this way round of uh, Acton Central is they actually drop the pantograph so I'm gonna do that because I'm gonna pretend like I'm an overground driver for just a second to <laughs> have my moment of glory here so getting to Acton Central I would now pop over here uh, put the pan down which hopefully it's done. Yep, it has. So now we are hopefully not on any power. And if we are, then sorcery. And this is how they would do it. I might be wrong about it, but this is how I kind of hear things happening when I, when they approach into Acton Central. I hear that the, uh, the power goes off and the brakes still work. So you can go in with no pantograph power and the brakes will just, you know... Because obviously you have batteries on this loco, so you have power still when you don't have actual connections to like the pantograph or whatever. But anyway, I do believe we are here. Let's just slow down now. And we're here. And I'll be on time. Oh, we're just out of luck there, I do believe. But anyway... So, let's just check quickly, are our shoes down? It appears so. But I'm just going to put the shoes down anyway. There we go. Now that we've arrived at Exeter Central, you'll need to switch the third rail for the reminder of the trip, remainder of the trip uh, to Richmond. Do this by pressing the pan down button and press the yellow shoes down button once you're done proceed to Acton Central okay so this is the problem I've had I've done exactly what it told me but the shoes are down which I do you can see right now the shoes are down but the pantograph goes up which is annoying so Right. No, you see, this is the prob This is the problem I've been having with it. The shoes are down. The shoes are down. There should, there should be power, but if I now go here and see that the the shoes will be the shoes will be up. Where is it? Yep, yeah, the shoes are up now. And if I put the shoes down. There we go, we've got power again. But if I go outside, the pantograph's gone back up. <laughs> it's it's like, really? It's so annoying. Like, I had this problem, exact problem on stream, and I think someone told me I just have to keep pressing P 
until it goes down. Come on. Come on, no, work with me. See, no, there's no power. Ah, I think I got it. Right, that should work now. There we go. See, that's just so buggy. Like, what the hell? I don't know if that, that's like a bug or whatever, but you have to kind of tease the pantograph down and then it will work on third. Like, what? <laughs> it just, it's, what? <laughs> okay, just, um, you know, the, the, the life of a overground driver just solving my electrical problems. <laughs> But that seemed to work, so, because I don't want to, like, it, it would have worked if I left the pantograph there and have the shoes down, but I don't want to have that kind of really odd aesthetical feature, like, come on, we're on third rail, we don't want, like, a, an odd pantograph sticking out in the air for no reason, like, it just doesn't look right. South Acton. A lot of flats and stuff here, do, I do recall. And this is actually where a junction splits off, where freight goes right, and we continue left into Gunnersbury. And you can see here we're getting like a signal, because we're going to be approaching the junction where we meet the district line, so there's obviously going to be traffic there from the district line, and where the overground has to converge, and you know, they have to merge into kind of one line into, into Richmond. Right, nicely does it here. There we go. We're obviously going to be late now because of that pantograph issue, which is just a shame. Yeah, we're two minutes late. We're not going to make it, but I, I just... And there's a cat again. <laughs> you can see here, like, the pantograph isn't... Well, it's fully down now, I guess. I suspect that pantograph on that train is slightly lower than mine. Because I had to kind of, like, tease mine down, which is really annoying. But hey ho, what can you do? Alright. Off we go. Next uh next signal should be red. Now an actual peculiar thing actually happens here at this junction. When this train turns right and it splits from the uh from the uh from from the track here, it actually uh, in real life what happens is it it jiggles quite a bit, and there's like a huge spark. I don't know why it happens, but the traction's like probably a bit weird there, and it and it always happens as soon as we like uh, depart South Acting and go onto that kind of like line. It it's weird, but it's just a, like a little kind of thing that happens, and I just wanted to just tell you guys about because it, it always happens when we like depart out of South Acton. You just go a little bit, and as soon as you turn off uh, the tracks to go onto the left uh, left side. It just, like, the, the whole train just jolts a bit and you can hear the spark just, you know. I don't know. If anyone's been in there, have, have, has anyone felt that kind of uh, spark or whatever? Oh, we have a green light. That's good. That means that there's no district lines affecting us. And I do believe there's pe people, as I said, that people have actually made scenarios where they've actually included the class 483 as the, uh, the district line tube. And it's so funny to see it against the... Uh, it's a kind of same thing with like the Bakerloo line in real life with the uh, overground 378s. It just looks wrong. They're just so small. And then you have like this huge 378 riding beside it. And obviously, in terms of like on the Watford Junction to Euston line, you're going to have a, a dynamic here where you have to make the platforms tall enough for people to get on board the 378s, but you're going to have to make the platforms low enough so people can, you know, instead of jumping on board onto the underground train. So there's a bit of a dilemma there in terms of platform height, but I think it's a fun little one. Anyway, 
we're entering Gunnersbury now, and I do believe the the marker is around somewhere before the S mark here, because only the district line goes to the very end of the platform. I do believe. I think our stop is, you know, on one of these kind of lamp posts or whatever. Right. Gunnersbury, very, very much a, biz a business district. These car parks are pretty much bang on the money here with the, with the scenery. It's an odd little station. It's uh, it's basically busy now because of the, the industrial, well not industrial, business park that's, uh, that's there now. So this is the station where a lot of people in rush hour in the morning get off, which I find is very nice because it gives me a a nice little breath of relief and then basically the journey from here from Gunnersbury to Richmond's a bit more pleasant because there's less people on board and it pretty much empties out the whole train everyone seems to just get off at Gunnersbury and the actual departure here out of Gunnersbury is a bit annoying <laughs> annoying 15 and then as soon as the last carriage comes out of the platform, there you go, bam, into 45s. It's a bit annoying. I hate that. But this is a ni the nice, I think probably the nicest part of the route, I guess. It's uh, basically going over the Thames. It's always the most kind of scenic thing for me when we do journey over it. And then Kew Gardens. And then finally, Richmond. And obviously, as you can see, we're riding over fourth rail, which is all good. But anyway, here we're riding over the bridge of the River Thames, and there was a cat again. Wow, that is that is high tide right there. If I saw high tide, wow, and that island's actually there as well. Getting a bit of drop in FPS, I'm not liking that. One thing I like comparing when I'm riding on this route, which is like, I like, because I've been on the district line on this part of the route as well as obviously the overground, and the, it's just the difference in speeds that both trains get up to, uh, especially with the D stock. I don't think the S, well, when I was riding on this part of the line, the S stock hadn't reached this part. I don't know if currently, right now, the S stock is. Uh, uh, branched out onto this part of the district line, but I remember like just comparing like the train because obviously the D stop is so much slower compared to the 378. The 378 can go fast; it can go you know up to 75 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, even 90. But the D stop is obviously built for maybe I don't know 30, and maybe just 40. So it's just it feels so weird. Like you can feel one is struggling to keep up to like 40, 45, while the other just glides along and gets up to the speed with no actual problem. <laughs> anyway, Kew Gardens, uh, which uh, I don't even have this self-explanatory. The uh, the uh, botanical gardens of Kew Gardens. I think I've only been there once actually long time ago when I was in primary school. It was a very nice place to visit. It used to be free, but now they charge like 20 quid to get in, which is a bit annoying. But it's a very nice place. Very nice, beautiful place to walk around. And we finally depart to our final station on the route, which is Richmond. I have to say, overall, this... I, I like this. I like this route. Like, it's, I, I just like it because obviously it's my kind of, in a way, local route in a way. It's a route probably that I've ridden on the most in my life. So I'm going to like it. And I think that's the same with anyone in terms of if they have a route that they have their home station or local station on. If it's like a particular branch line or line that someone's been on it and it's like, you know, they've been on it regularly. It's obviously going to have like, you know, some sort of like sweet spot for you. And that's the same for me. Like I, I thoroughly enjoyed this journey because I can relate to a lot of it. The down points, as I said, that uh, well, some of this FPS dropping has been a bit annoying, but that might be on the type of scenario. So I'm not going to blame that on the kind of route. 
I'm just a bit annoyed that they didn't add the branch lines and add a bit more variety to it. I get the whole point of people saying that it has, it's very linear and the linearity of it is just the thing that br brings it down. And that's the only real thing I think that brings it down is its linearity and it's kind of, it's a bit vague. It's just, you know, it's, it's just driving from A to B with just loads of stations in the middle and there could have been so much potential here to do some branch lines, like at least the Clapham like the Clapham route would have been such a cool branch line to uh, uh, as I said we have Clapham so we have the assets and stuff for Clapham why wasn't it added like, it's only a few more stops it's only like you know uh, Shepherd's Bush uh, West Brompton Kensington Olympia uh, and Imperial Wharf and Clapham Junction it's not like you know like we have another 15 more stations to do it's only like another four or three but anyway those are the kind of things I know, yeah, or like I had like the Goblin line or the Watford DC line, you know, or connect up Surrey Keys to Highbury and Enslington. That could have been easily achieved. But, you know, that's how it's panned out. And as a route by itself in terms of like the detail and stuff, I have to say it's very detailed and I kind of related to a lot of it when I was driving it. So I'm very, you know, it's been very nice to ride. And we're entering platform three, which is actually my favourite platform in Richmond. I don't know why, but just it's it's nice. It's right next to the Southwest Trains uh, platform, so it's a nice kind of interchange if you want to hop on quickly onto the Southwest lines. Which actually a lot of people actually do when they when they get off the overground, they either tend to go onto the Southwest Trains platform that I go on to to continue on to like places like Twickenham or Staines or whatever, or they're quickly jumping on to go on to Waterloo. So, you know, or just getting out of Richmond, really. But here we go, anyway. We're finally here. I think the platform's just about... Yeah, they just about fit a five car, which is all right. And... I see does it. Perfect. Oh no, there we go, perfect, and then you can see a 450, in all goodness there. I'm just going to actually quickly, I actually want to quickly take a nice little snapshot of this because I, I do like it. Uh, let's Oh no, give me, uh, give me, give me, give me, where is the headlights? Oh, I didn't clear the scenario, oh well. <laughs> Why aren't the headlights changing? Oh, let me just quickly, oh, I can't do it, oh, it doesn't matter, I'll take a snapshot of it anyway. But there we go guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that, I'm going to give that a like, that was a very nice s scenario to do. Speeding 19 times, well, it wouldn't be a quality video without speeding, picked up passengers at 8 out of 22 platforms, that's basically just, well some platforms were shorter than others, so I guess, you know, we were there at every platform, I think there was only one where I slightly kind of ran a bit, but there was none that I really like, did, like, nothing was really over the top. I think every platform I was within door opening range, so I don't know, uh, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed that, I hope you guys did too. Overall I think the route's great, like, I, uh, as I said the only flaws, I just wish I had a bit more variety. Uh, they could have included the Goblin, the Clapham or the Watford DC or just continued the uh, connected up the East London portion of the line, That those were in a way things that I'm only kind of annoyed about the route. Everything else I think is fine. It's a very enjoyable route if you like stopping services. If you don't like stopping services, then this is definitely not the route for you and you should just look at maybe high speed ones and a bit more lengthier routes. But if this is something, if you like just doing stopping services, then this is just, this is a great route. Like, this is one of the busiest stopping service uh, services in the country. So, you know, you've got something special here if you like stopping services. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. I did, and uh, I really did enjoy it. 
Uh, the shouts again go to Alec Fire underscore and the Gaming Man. That's again Alec Fire underscore and the Gaming Man. The links and stuff will be down below. I hope you've enjoyed this journey with me. I will definitely bring out some more North London line coverage, especially the one with the 172, which will be really cool to do. And then if there's any kind of good scenarios where there's like, you know, some kind of cool, like alternate destinations or whatever, then I might pick up those to do. I might as well uh, do as well a one in the class 59 slash two, the German freight unit that came with the map. I might do that because I was given that as well for free, so I might do a video on that. I'm not obliged to, but I might do it, see how that is. But anyway, I hope you guys have a lovely day, and I hope you've enjoyed my little kind of, well, not little, but my little, my long journey here on the North London Line with the Class 378 going from Stratford to Richmond. I hope you guys have a lovely day, and I'll see you in another video. Bye, guys. We ain't never given up cause we ain't